A priest and a rabbi walk into a bar. What, do you think that's the beginning of a joke? That's what I think every time I hear this gospel passage from Luke. It's like Jesus sets this up as a joke. Two people go into the temple to pray. And actually, he makes it an incredible cartoon, these two men who are really caricatures. But to really get the cartoon, we have to understand who they are. Who are the Pharisees? We hear a lot about them in the Gospels, and they don't come off too good. But who were they in reality at the time of Jesus? So the Pharisees were a group of lay people who were very upset with the moral laxity of the clergy at the time. And so what they did, they wanted to make sure that they followed completely the entire law of Moses. So it's almost like they erected a hedge of religious prescriptions around the law so that they would be doing even more than the law asked for, following God and their religious practices in a very straight-laced and righteous way. They were, by all accounts, good people. They did, like this one says in this gospel, pay tithes on all their income, fast twice a week, all of these religious practices that they followed, doing more than the, law, than the law asked for so that they could be sure of doing everything that the law required. By all objective standards, this guy speaks the truth about himself. He was a good and righteous Jew, a good man. Who are the tax collectors? Well, think of them as kind of like mid-level bureaucrats from uh, occupied France or Holland during the Second World War who actually uh, collaborated with the Nazis. So these are guys who um, collect the taxes for the, for the uh, occupying force of Rome and to make a living they have to collect more from their fellow countrymen than Rome wants so that they pocket the more. So they're cheats, they're thieves, um, because if you don't pay up your tax to Rome, they can denounce you to Rome, and then the soldiers will come knocking on your door. So he tells the truth about himself too. Everyone looked at tax collectors and thought, yeah, you guys are full of sin. He was a sinner. By every objective standard, the Pharisee is a far better man than the tax collector. Surprise in the cartoon, not, however, in God's eyes. It surprised and shocked and probably offended the people to whom Jesus first told the story. And I think it forces us also to look at some uncomfortable truths about ourselves and our dealings with God and with other people. And the first and most basic truth that kind of screams out from this story is something we already know but we need to be reminded of over and over again. We do not save ourselves. Now, individualists may pride themselves on pulling pulling themselves up by their own, own bootstraps in other situations, but not when it comes to salvation. God lifts and carries everyone. No one gets to heaven on his or her own two feet. Friendship with God is never a reward for good deeds, which one does on one's own. The kingdom of God is not the wage I earn by righteous living. Rather, grace, God's grace, is always and everywhere pure gift. A gift certainly to be celebrated with thankfulness and shared in humility. Now, there's nothing wrong with taking delight in the good that God is doing in my life and through me. But we get on this kind of slippery slope then. We too easily slide into delighting first in what I'm doing with God's help, then in what I'm helping God do, and then eventually in what I'm doing on my own for God. Because I, like, unlike other Human beings are righteous. So it's all gift. This kind of pernicious shifting of attention from God's graciousness to our own power also 
manifests itself in a kind of ugly smugness toward other people. And again, we hear that in the Pharisees' words. I'm glad that I'm not like other people. So it's difficult just to be satisfied noticing that I'm not an adulterer, but Mary over there sure is. Or noticing that I am attempting to fast once a week, but Hester over there sure is stopping her face all the time. So this thoroughgoing veneration of my own navel demands a corresponding contempt for the people around me. And the result of that dynamic is that one comes to see other people only as kind of foils to my own godlike self. I thank thee, Father, that I am not like other human beings. Into a, a heart and a life so full of itself, where is there room for God? Where is there room for God's blessing? So before God can stop such a person from self-adulation, God first must kind of break all the mirrors before which he is burning incense to himself. And that's what this parable does for us, this story. It kind of shatters those looking glasses in which good people contemplate their own goodness. If one must concentrate on oneself at all, the only path to follow in this cartoon Jesus sets before us is blazed by the tax collector. I am a sinner. Sin is ugly. Recognizing that one is a sinner is painful. But from the ugliness of sin, we are more easily led to gaze into the beauty of God's mercy and God's love. From the pain of self-accusation, recognizing my sin, we can more easily turn to God and self-abandonment. Because no sin is beyond the reach of God's forgiveness. No sinner is beyond basking in the radiance of God's grace, of his mercy. If I can admit that my heart is empty, God will fill it. If I can confess my weakness, God will carry me. When, like the Pharisee, we are all decked out in virtues that deserve to be admired, then we run the risk like the Pharisee, of fixating on our virtues because they are ours, rather than seeking the God whose beauty is dimly reflected in them. Should the pond claim credit for the moonlight that turns its ripples into silver? The tax collector, on the other hand, having nothing to brag about, runs no risk of self-delusion. Knowing his nakedness, knowing his weakness, he can only turn to God for mercy. And like that other sinner who begged to be remembered as he hung on the cross next to Jesus, he can therefore hear the promise, you shall be with me in paradise.